This girl went to the Jurassic World school of unnecessarily running in heels. Hey. Are you okay? Yeah. A female neighbor asks an obviously distressed teen girl who was running down the street in fear and wearing underwear and hooker heels if she's okay. The girl lies to her and says she's fine and the neighbor carries on unloading her groceries. This must be one f***ed up neighborhood. Fine, Dad. It's pretty outrageously clear you're not fine. And this girl who wants to run away from an unseen attacker does it in the craziest way imaginable, in full view of everyone, rather than simply getting in a car or running away less conspicuously. Now she runs for the car. It's very apparent this girl's been running from whatever it is for a while now, and yet she doesn't keep the keys on her at all times. Dad, I'm sorry I can be such a sh to you sometimes. Britney Spears' voicemail somehow ends up in the final script. Her leg may be exactly the opposite of where it's supposed to be, but at least she died perky. <laughs> she cleaned out one leaf from this dirty-ass swimming pool and said, Yep, clean enough. In a true David vs. Goliath tale, small independent horror movie kills Ant-Man. Hey, Jay. A heroine with a masculine or unisex name will be extra tough, unlike certain dead girls on the beach named Annie. A very normal teen activity, silently watching old movies with friends in the middle of the day. What the hell kind of device is this? It's either a makeup compact or a birth control dispenser. Either way, it's the most impractical thing to read on since a stone tablet. Those lamps, that TV, that dress, apparent fog machine, ladies and gentlemen, I think we've got ourselves a level 10 hipster. Remember that time I was swimming by myself? It was so great. I want to commemorate it by making it one of the three cherished pictures I hang on my vanity. I mean, did the creepy neighbor boy of warriors take this photo? You start by watching the crowd. Casually. Just go about the people around you. Who can all clearly hear this loud as hell conversation? Him. The dad? I'm the son. Yeah, that was immediately obvious when you said him, you pronoun game playing asshole. Plus, at that age, you can go to the bathroom anytime you want. Total freedom. Yeah. He's probably taking a shit right now. Do you two even school? Five-year-olds are not often in diapers, nor are they shitting their pants at a movie theater. Also, the two blondes in front of them right now were well behind them at the single-file box office. Which can only mean these two entered the theater, then spent five minutes debating if they wanted to get in line for concessions, allowing the blondes to get ahead. And the redhead with the two Asian girls are in front of them for tickets, but then behind them here. Somewhere there's a PA who thinks they did their job just by merely having the same extras in both scenes, and that person works at Starbucks now. How about the girl in the yellow dress? Since we find out that Jay can't see this girl in the yellow dress, who is obviously here to kill this dude, why isn't she making a beeline towards him right now? Apparently she's just hanging out at the theater lobby. And then this monster just lets him leave the theater. Unless Hugh took Jay on the wildest escape from an old theater since John Wilkes Booth and we didn't see it. I totally felt sick and needed to get the f*** out of the theater. So let's go to a diner and eat now. And I will not look the least bit scared because I'd like to see a monster infiltrate this fortress. Do I smell bad? Um, you literally puffed that cigarette seconds ago. I don't even have to sniff you to say that yes is the answer. Let's go back. Why is the car a better doing it spot than the f***ing deserted beach? Hello? Romance much? Who keeps a bra on during the first time they have sex with someone? I'm not gonna hurt you. Love the moral code that doesn't count a surprise drugging and kidnapping situation as hurting someone. This thing, it's gonna follow you. Ah, close enough. Let's roll some credits. It could look like someone you know, or it could be a stranger in a crowd. Dude, couldn't you have at least put her clothes back on before you gave it a lesson on this sexually transmitted demon? It's very slow, but it's not dumb. If it's not dumb, why is it taking the form of a very obvious lady? In fact, why is it taking the form of a human being at all? Wouldn't it be more effective to be a wolf that could chase people down and rip out their throats? This demon is f***ing lazy. That's why we're drinking on the porch. I'm more concerned with how you're drinking on the porch and getting away with it. Is this one of those horror movies that pretends parents don't exist, or exist, but are shitty people? We've established that this dude is a cowardly piece of shit, but that's no reason for this girl to not at least get her clothes back. The police in this town must be real tired of responding to terrified naked girls in the streets. I suppose you'll be expecting me to comment hornily about this girl's attire, but I am way too distracted with how f***ing clean the bathroom countertop is in a home with two teenage girls. Rubber ball jump scare. This kid is worse than Tom Ripley. But if he's peeping, why did we never see him the entire time Jay was in the bathroom? And did he, who wants to peep without her knowledge, throw this ball? Or did someone who doesn't approve of his peeping throw this ball at him and leave? Did the filmmakers just want a jump scare that made no sense? As we'll soon find out, almost nobody coming after Jay is someone she knows. Or anyone who blends in the crowd. They're all out of place, announcing their presence. This movie could have been a lot scarier if it followed the it could be anyone thing. There was an old woman at school today. She was staring at me. It was like she was following me. It was like? What exactly is supposed to be following you? I don't know. That guy who f***ed me but then gave me instructions was actually kind of vague and I have no idea what's going on. F***ing Hugh. Teenage boy in a house with three hot teenage girls is watching a movie instead of, oh, you know what, I bet he already did that. What is it with these kids in the classic movies? I don't doubt that they're fans, but all the time. You know, it follows, but it takes a really long time for it to catch up. 5% of this movie's runtime is other movies. And then you kiss Kelly. She told me. You kissed two sisters, that's kind of gross. Only if they're your sisters. Also, kissing two sisters is gross? Seriously? Damn, high school me is gross then. I was gonna high five this guy. 
Oh, so the demon can manipulate objects in the real world, and other people can see the result of that manipulation, but not the demon itself. This demon really should just wait until these people are all asleep. Also, I'd like to know what kind of it decides, you know what, I'm gonna change it to this person on this go-round. I'm like the T-1000, but only when it was burning in liquid steel. Okay, that's a pretty damn good scare. A supernatural slow thing is chasing me and trying to kill me. I should go sit somewhere out in the open, with a full half my surroundings hidden from my view behind me. I am a smart girl. These people never seem to run very far. A local beach, the neighborhood park. Has anyone tried crossing the globe? Could the ghost slowly make its way to the airport and hop on a jet to the Philippines? Jay! Hey, our friend took off on a bike a minute ago and we have no idea where she went. To the park! You can't tell mom. Tell mom? I'm waiting to even see mom. Whoever did this music stole all the John Carpenter. And she would not need to go find Hugh and drag out this movie's runtime if Hugh had simply given her anything other than cryptic bull after f***ing her. Movie ops for the jump scare, when the real scare would have been way more satisfying. God damn it, we get it. Your phone is a flashlight as well. If I didn't know better, I'd think this entire film was made to help sell seashell flip phones. Tissues are an orgy of evidence that actual orgies were the furthest thing from happening in this shack. Wow, Horny Paul just stumbled on an important clue by spending lots of time flipping through a porno mag. Let's hear it for porn! U.S.A. U.S.A. A combination of audio and subtitles tell me the announcement says, also your banquet is this Sunday at 3 p.m. here at the high school. Who the f*** schedules a banquet of any kind at 3 in the goddamn afternoon? Props to the movie for having a creepy person walking straight towards the car in this scene that none of the characters notice or acknowledge, and which made me pee a little. I mean, it should be easy for her if she's a girl. That's racist. It goes straight down the line whoever started it. Well, this just raises the question as to who started it and when. Has this death demon only been around like 30 years? What if the person who started it is already long dead? What happens then? Does it just wander the earth unseen by anyone, not killing? Why can't it just do that now? Who did it to you? I met a girl at a bar. It was one night stand. I don't even remember her name. How did this guy figure out the it was following him? All because of the sex he had with a girl whose name he can't even remember. Do you guys see that girl right there? Definitely not it, because it so far has been nothing but scary looking ghosts unconcerned about their nudity. Have you thought about what he said? Maybe passing it on? Actually, this raises an important question. Can the ghost be transferred only via penis in vagina sex? What about blowjobs? What about lesbian sex? Is the murder ghost a homophobe? Can I feed it after midnight? He found a gun, sure, but how much spare ammo did he find? Instead of contorting you into a sickening twisted position, I'm going to pull your hair first and announce my arrival. If the ghost is basically unkillable, then why does it even bother to fall on the ground? It's like, oh, f that hurt. Well, not anymore. Jay legitimately thinks she can kill an STD demon ghost via gun bullets. I know I was just a little kid literally 10 seconds ago, but I have decided to be a girl now, so deal with it. Jay drives off without her friends, despite the fact that all she needs to do is circle around and tell her friends to get in before the walking ghost finally gets to her. I mean, I kind of hope all these people stop being friends with Jay after this. We're supposedly in the booniest of boonies, yet of course there's an inconsiderate truck backing up right as Jay drives by. No one has to worry, those footsteps are clearly too fast to be the it. Well, she decided to pass it on and give it up to the guy whose name I can't remember. While I watch this unpassionate sex, I'm reminded that this monster has had all day to come and attack Jay, but is once again hanging out at one of the gas stations by the John C. Lodge freeway, grabbing a Coke, I guess. Have you seen it? Nothing. Yeah, about that. Why? Why is the demon waiting three days? Just to f*** with them? Didn't it start coming after Jay pretty quick after her getting the evil intercourse? Here is a compelling shot of a trash can. The solution to escape the ghost is very, very simple. Use locks on your doors and don't have any windows. By the way, is this the 80s? What the hell was that thing Yara was using earlier? I mean, I'm glad this movie doesn't have cell phones or a perceptible era, but a timeline where I'm using a phone with a cord is a nightmare situation. Craig! Open the door, Craig! You saw that dude go through the window, right? Take your cue from the ghost dude, Jay. There you go. This is the only time the ghost appears as someone the infected person knows, because he's not the main character. The only thing this ghost loves more than murder is showing off boobs. Maybe it's such an exhibitionist because it's invisible to most people. If she's gonna have sex with these dudes, does it only transfer to the one who first gets his dick in her? Technically all of them are having sex with each other in this four-way. I'd love to know the orgy rules. They block the door with a chair to keep out a demon. Did I miss a throwaway line of dialogue early in the movie that explains the parents' absence via snooty Italian holiday? It's gonna be here sooner or later. Okay, then what the f*** was with that scene where she saw the boat dudes and waded out into the water and we cut straight to her driving with wet hair? Is it that she tried to pass it along via orgy but it didn't work? Did she not explain to those dudes what the consequences might be no matter how crazy she sounded? I could... No. But seriously, he could, and the movie's been building to this since he was introduced, so why not? Is it runtime related? I bet it is. I liked you too, you know. Why'd you pick Greg? To f*** in general or to pass the demon STD on to? Because maybe she was trying to save your life, dickweed. Or maybe she needs to pass it on to a dude with at least a remote chance of ever getting laid again. This fucking ghost. Did you really think you'd find her on the roof, dude? We've seen how long it takes for you to get around. How long did this take? What a total waste of time. I again suggest everyone fly to the other side of the world. Also, the director said it'll be creepier if I'm naked. I mean, he's naked. If he's naked. When I was a little girl, 
My parents wouldn't allow me to go south of 8 Mile. Now everybody from the 313, put your hands in the air. Oh wait, wrong movie. Also, Detroit is the real victim in this movie. Poor damn city. Lay off. I don't see why Robocop can't kill this monster. Okay, so they scale the fence, we see the building they're going to, then BAM! They found a way inside somehow because f security. The movie steals its finale from Let the Right One In. How long do you think it'll be? Hmm, hours I bet. Or days. Or a week. Or seven minutes. There was literally nowhere near enough data about this randomly appearing demon to make any kind of guess. She has no idea how long until it arrives. Is she prepared to stand in the pool for days if necessary? Oh good, the drama gods decided it needed to start raining just in time for the final battle, which means a ghost is going to start following this movie for having a rainy climax. Movie suddenly decides to give us the demon's POV out of nowhere. Oh well, at this point I'm honestly paying more attention to these bait car reruns on TV than I am this movie I'm sinning. Wait, why isn't this electrocuting her? Also, this ghost decides not to go into the water, even though there's no reason why that's not an option at this point. They can't throw anything in while she's in the pool, and as we find out later, it can actually swim and catch up to Jay. It'd pretty much be game over since none of her friends can see it. Okay everyone, just to let you know, the ghost just threw a folding chair into the pool, and it somewhat worked. Oh great, now she also has to worry about sharks. Ah! Kara! Well, that was basically inevitable. Man, this version of the It doesn't show any fight at all. It just lets them do whatever they want. The last time it was attacked, it punched Paul off the screen it was so mad. Too bad Mythbusters basically made all of these shooting bullets into the water scenes complete bull****. Although, to be fair, this is apparently some sort of parallel universe where kids watch classic movies, have old electronics, but still read books on seashell fire. Hmm, three shots blind into the water that all nearly killed Jay, and boom, he got him! Paul will never qualify for Stormtrooper school. Even after the pool turned to blood, something happened which we did not see to make Jay convinced she needed to f*** Paul, which she has heretofore been unwilling to do. Or wait, does she love him now because he came up with a plan that failed but then accidentally still killed the thing? So she's screwing him genuinely? Of course! Give it to a prostitute! Actually, why didn't you guys think of this earlier? I root for Paul, but there's no way he landed this chick. Even if he saved her life ten more times, I don't see this working. The movie vaguely shows someone in the background following them at the end to give you the old ambiguous ending. But since the dude in the background looks very normal, I'm gonna say, that guy is not a demonic ghost and just a stalker. So, dodged a bullet there. And we will definitely be spending a lot of time talking about masturbation! I would let that girl give me f***ing AIDS. But I would walk 500 miles and I would walk 500 miles. Who should appear but the unrequited love of my college years, Mimsy Bancroft. Of course, by then Mimsy had her share of wrinkles and a grey hair or two, but my adoring eyes saw past those minor imperfections to her 21-year-old daughter Lily. <laughs> 